we have these crossroads. And you know, either way you choose, your life is going to be different. The universe doesn't exist, but God thinks it does. We have to stop consuming our culture. We have to create culture. Stupidity has a definite evolutionary function. I am all for abolishing stupidity, but before it goes, we should pay tribute to it. Hello, friends, and welcome to the Nonsense Bazaar. We're your hosts, I'm Sequoia Kennedy. And I'm Willow Truman. Oh. Uh, <sighs> it's happening again. Yeah, what is? I'm losing my fucking mind. Oh. <laughs> when are we not losing our minds? Yeah, I, like, I'm perpetually in a state of losing my mind, but also keeping a firm grasp on it. It seems... So, this is the second june we've been doing this show it is last summer i went a little fucking crazy too yeah well last summer was hairy horse that sent us for a fucking loop Mm -hmm. yeah oh wow yeah that was a year ago yep yep wow okay we can move on from that jesus christ where does the time go where's the time go time go and then of course count of saint germain stuff that threw me for a loop at the end of the summer and it's happening again oh wow last summer that's you're yeah. right. That was our whole ascended master's journey. Yeah. 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 And now here we are again. Here we are again. What are we? So we're back in it. Yes. So what the fuck can I possibly be talking about? Yeah. While I was researching the remote viewing stuff, I got struck by something that was right in front of me forever, but like never clicked. Right. Yeah. That's how like the, the remote viewing program was at the center or at least in tight orbit around the center of all the stuff in the broader paranormal high strangeness conspiracy field Mm -hmm. especially ufos yes right yes 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 so here's here's the thing i gotta confess i've never been a ufo guy yeah you've said that before yeah yeah i've always thought they were neat Uh uh-huh interesting for sure um but i was always more interested in like the mothman skinwalker ranch men in black style high strangeness than i was like the government they go together right but like i've i didn't realize that because like you know i've tried to watch the x-files yeah it's not my jam Right. I'm a Twin Peaks guy. Mm-hmm. I, I, don't, I don't I don't, take it. You know, even though I love that cloak and dagger shit, I like the Dale Cooper federal, federal gym stuff. Yeah. Um, I've dipped my toe into both. Yeah. I've never quite put my whole body in yeah. to either. But, you know, I'm also like, I'm really fascinated with magic and mysticism and psychedelics. And like, I think of myself as a writer more than a ufologist or a magician or anything. Like, there's only so much time in a day and there's so many interesting things. Right. Right. Well, you know, anyone who's listened to our show enough knows that I went through my whole alien phase. Yeah, exactly. So I was like really into aliens and abduction stories for quite a time there. And I feel like a special bond with, I don't know. Yeah. Well, and so I, my entry into conspiracy was like, you know, over a decade ago at a dark time in my life. And I fell into the, you know, New World Order government conspiracy uh-huh. shit i got out of it pretty fast like they were talking a decade ago hold, right hold on to your right hands. right you just find you all it takes is you find that one website where you're like oh mm-hmm. okay i yeah 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 no, no i'm not i'm not with this i got got and then i quickly got ungotten when i realized it was bullshit so i've always been soured mm-hmm. on that type of uh, i have i have firewalls up you know yeah. but you got that McAfee antivirus up. Yeah. Now, I also thought that the phenomenon was essentially unknowable, best understood in a mystic context, and that the government didn't fucking know shit. Mm-hmm. Right? That was always my kind of my take on, like, they don't fucking, they don't know anything, right, the, about the weird, the spooky UFOs. Right. Well, I didn't realize just how spooky the government got. Yeah. Turns out they get real spooky. <laughs> <laughs> As we learned in our Psychic Spy series. Yes. And, you know, it was you, Willow, who first told me about the documentary Mirage Men. Yeah. Uh, the documentary about Paul Benowitz. And had you also had me take a serious look at, like, channeling, mind control, and hypnosis, all things that I admittedly didn't take seriously at all beforehand. Mm-hmm. So during the research on the remote viewing program, and so I should say at this point, like, uh, this episode is going to be, like, a broad kind of conversational overview of a lot of stuff that like I haven't untangled yet to put into a right. tight, comprehensive series. I mean, this is going to inform multiple series, but we're just going to talk about some things. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm in the middle of no less than four books right now. Then four <laughs> books. So, yeah. Um, so during the research on the remote viewing program, the last congressional and quote UAP hearing happened. And there was careful. A, 
Careful. That term's copyrighted. <laughs> oh, yeah. Christ. yeah, I forgot about that. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. Oh, shut up. I know, I know. Uh, I'm just going to I mean, that's the, like the last time I'm going to say UAP, okay. although maybe it could be useful to distinguish between two different stories. But there is this big hub. UAP, UAP, UAP. What you going to do? <laughs> <laughs> but there's this big hub about something called the Wilson Memo. Mm. Right? And that was written by a Dr. Eric Davis. Uh, it's a memo about a conversation he had with uh, an Admiral Wilson about some UFO shit. Yeah. And, and I thought, like, I was reading about this, like, oh, right, Eric Davis, Skinwalker Ranch, right? Well, then I found out that Hal Putoff, who ran the remote viewing program, and Eric Davis are very much connected, running a lab down in Texas looking it's at weird shit. interesting the places that Hal Putoff's name yeah. pops up that you, I, you know, after we did our uh psychic spy and i learned mm-hmm. all about that stuff from you he keeps and, showing up yeah and that, then i i'm like oh hell put off he's coming up in these other places that yeah i wouldn't expect he's he might be the dude that shows up the most often uh-huh or at least one one of them because i found out he how put off is on the the he was on the board of nids right and he's still on the advisory board for to the stars the tom DeLong joint yep yeah yep that one so I, I I'm going through all this shit and it's all like hitting me. I'm like, oh my Jesus. Oh, sweet Jesus, protect me. Mm-hmm. He didn't. I he didn't stop me. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I I hit up our boy AP Strange and I said basically, Hey man, I don't know anything about anything. What's the scoop with like Lou Elizondo and Two of the Stars? And he replied, Oh boy. And then he sent me a fucking Daffy Duck cartoon. That's entirely true. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> fucking looney tunes yeah uh with a couple steps but there's a couple steps in between yeah yeah that, but like the but Daffy Duck cartoon was absolutely relevant it's the one where uh bugs bunny is the animator mm-hmm. yeah i hadn't seen it before um but the steps in between are some of what we're going to be talking about today yeah so this is one of those episodes like we did at the start of our i'm going to call it a war against the ascended masters yeah inquisition it was an inquisition but it, it felt like a war it yeah be both. it can be both and for me, I felt like Jane Goodall, Hell yeah. you know, Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just like researching with a curious, but now, curious, but open mind to understand what we're dealing with here. Think upon the many headed Hydra. Ah, yeah. OK. So there's going to be a conversational overview of some really complex shit that will be covered in granular and overproduced detail in the future. Yeah. Because believe it or not, research takes time. <laughs> it does, because believe me, like. I'm going to get back to like looking glass, mm-hmm. on talk, all of those things, yeah. which then tie into these things. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just not. I needed some time for like things to breathe because it's a lot. Yeah. And also when you're dealing with conspiracy shit, there's so many names, so much necessary background for things to have the impact that they need to have. Mm-hmm. So I think it's a good thing to do episodes like this to give just a broad strokes yeah. about things so yeah it's like a nice little exhale so we're gonna talk about ufos and ufo spirits but first let's do our tarot pull yeah and apply to ornithology ornithology bird studies i know I'm like, <laughs> oh, bird. Oh, yeah the aviary bird law yes all right what we got <laughs> yeah what we got what we got what we got the Five of Cups. Okay. Disappointment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mars in Scorpio, which is Scorpio is often, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. Mars Wearing is, a Mars necklace. Oh, hell yeah. And we saw the Mars symbol on the road. Yeah. That's, yeah, interesting. And uh, Mars is the ruler of Scorpio. We're dealing with the military. Mm-hmm. And uh, Scorpio is often considered the sign of the secret agent. Yeah. Secretive, deep, the depths. Right. A, a lot of the Scorpios that I know are, they're very interesting people. Yes. Yeah. One's literally a spook in Eastern Europe right now. Yeah. <laughs> huh. Five of Cups. Okay. And then there's also the heartbreak disappointment aspect, which, you yeah, know. <laughs> interesting. Yeah. So let's start talking about the bird boys. Okay. The, the, bir- the bird boys. Them bird boys. So. Legend of the Aviary, which is this group of people in the know about the spooky stuff who are willing to talk in some capacity to ufologists or the press or whatever. Mm -hmm. They're willing to leak shit. 
this legend came about during the whole Paul Benowitz Dolce bass thing. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, With I'm Phil Schneider and his hot dog dick. Yeah. 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 Well, I'm, I'm currently in the, in the halfway through saucer spooks and kooks by Adam go rightly, uh-huh. which is great. Uh, details like how these intelligence guys, air force intelligence, fucked with paul benowitz and then later on and by other, extension like fucked with everybody at the ufo conferences that oh yeah well, it wasn't, went around to yeah and uh that. so the code names were invented like the bird code names were you invented by um bill moore and jamie shandera two ufologists and like bill moore made a essentially in his you know he admitted to this but he basically like made a deal with the devil yeah um, so he's a ufologist yeah he's a ufologist and who, he meets a dude named Richard Doty. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Richard Doty uh, is sometimes referred to by the code name of uh, Falcon. Sometimes he's Falcon. Mm-hmm. He's not Falcon. And then sometimes yeah, I forget what the other one is. Chickadee probably piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was uh, Sparrow. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Richard Doty is an Air Force intelligence agent at Kirtland Air Force Base. Mm-hmm. And uh, Paul Benowitz sees some weird stuff in the sky and Air Force intelligence sets Richard Doty on them to feed him disinformation. Right. Like, Tell him he you, saw UFOs when, when he actually saw weapons tests. Conspiracy theories about like, oh, that is definitely disinformation ag- mm-hmm. agent. Like this guy literally was though. Yeah, absolutely. He he literally, literally was. Um, and he worked with this ufologist Bill Moore, who made a deal with the devil. He thought by playing ball with Richard Doty, he uh well, Yeah, because that's exactly, you know, you're a ufologist and this guy from the Air Force comes to you and is like, hey, I can show you like what's good. Right, right, like, right, right. I can let you in on the secret. You just got to help me out because this crazy dude saw some secret weapons tests that he wasn't supposed to see and just tell him it's UFOs. Right. Like right. give him this fake information. We need him to think it's UFOs because he saw real weapons, but we'll tell you about the real UFOs. Right. right. Give this guy fake information, but we're not giving you fake information. Right. We're being real with you. Right. Like, right. You right. Can trust us. Yeah. And like, you know, we're not going to get too deep and we can't get too deep into the Paul Benowitz story. Like that's a whole no. other few episodes. Right. But just to um, set the stage. Yeah. for Like what is what goes on? Well, Doty was also implicated in the faking of the Majestic 12 documents mm-hmm. that got Bill Cooper. Right. Yep. Yeah. 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 And still get people. And still get people. Like this is this stuff is part of the. You go on Bibliotheca Pleiades, you're going to read all about this shit. Right? Yeah. Then there was Project Serpo, which is another uh, Doty creation. Right. Which, and I've also seen Hal Putoff's name brought up right. with that too. Sure. Because these guys all knew each other. Uh huh. So like the aviary, as it wasn't an actual like organization. It was these ufologists just invented these names to refer to guys who were willing to talk to him but being the people who were involved in the weird shit which was all under the same it was all the same type of people who all knew each other because it's all the same shit yeah the you know? umbrella i yeah. guess like the paranormal is one thing mm-hmm. right like it just kind of is maybe ghosts or something else but i doubt it it's one thing. supernatural yeah. it all deals with consciousness there. there's all something to do with human consciousness yeah. that there's a underpinning. but so there's a bunch of these bird boys that all in some capacity would talk to people or swap information and shit. And it's Richard Doty considered one of them? He's one of them. Yeah. yeah absolutely. Yeah. And like another a dude who we talked about, Kit Green, who is the head of the CIA Weird Desk, he like in some emails, he has like said good things about Richard Doty. And then in some, he's like condemned his methods and shit. Mm-hmm. And in that, there's a really important distinction because whenever we start talking about CIA shit or like intelligence agencies and stuff it's really easy to forget that they're people i was just thinking that i'm yeah. thinking like you know why these mistakes happen is because fucking humans are fallible like we don't mm-hmm. know how to approach these things because there's no textbook or guidebook for how to approach like discovering right. the unseen yeah right exactly you know like how, how do we go about this i don't know we're bound to make some mistakes along right. the way though and that's not to excuse any, any no right because it's just human it's nature, though. Yeah. It's bound to happen. They're people. And, they're, and because they're people, they only have so much time in the day like us. And so, like, how could someone, how can we ever trust or or how can we ever trust someone who said nice things about Richard Doty? Well, because he didn't see Richard Doty from the same angle that we do. Right. Right. He didn't see him as a dude who just 
maliciously drove a man insane. He saw him as a dude who was doing some disinformation with some questionable methods, but like He's Paul Benowitz was unstable. Job. You know, Paul Benowitz was unstable. Like not everyone would have went crazy. Like that's just an unfortunate thing that happened. Honestly, the, I I think they fucking might have. They were like breaking into his house. And oh no, they gave him a fake computer like, that they said the aliens were talking to him through. Yeah, yeah. yeah, Air, yeah he no, Air Force would have. Air Force intelligence is really really fucked up. Those yeah. guys are really fucked up. <laughs> I had no idea. Actually, yeah, it seemed they seemed determined to drive this man insane. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So, okay. They might, now I've already said all that, there might actually be a weird cabal of people too. Yeah. (laughs) Because I found a Reddit post that took um, snippets from uh, uh, Jacques Vallée's published uh, diary uh, journals. Mm -hmm. He's also a bird boy, right? He had a code name. How put off was owl. I forget Jacques Vallée's. Kit Green's blue jay. Um, Some sort of bird. Some birds, you know? But uh, Jacques Vallée's journals were published. I want to be uh, Flamingo. That's a good, that's a good bird name. Yeah. Yeah. And this dude on Reddit took all the, or all the passages that he was talking about Kit Green. And this is all from the uh, late 80s to early 90s. Mm -hmm. And um, it's really interesting. Okay. So it shows that like in 1990, Kit Green didn't really take... A lot of this stuff, seriously, he didn't take UFOs really seriously. And he seemed to yeah. put up a real wall in his perception across the whole thing. But like like we saw in the remote viewing series, he was terrified of that shit. Mm-hmm. He didn't want it to ever be supernatural. He had a bad experience and he wasn't really. Right. Right. Because if it's real, then that's a paradigm shift in your entire reality. And that's a lot to deal with. Yeah. OK, so February 23rd, 1990. Jacques Vallée writes, once in a while, it's nice to clarify some little puzzle, even if the big mysteries remain. Over lunch today, the enigmatic Colonel Ron Blackburn decided to come clean with me in anticipation of our trip to New Mexico. Ron gave me his impressive biography with sanitized entries entitled Achievements in the Field of National Security. He'd co-founded what I jokingly nicknamed the Secret Onion Group and co-organized a national panel on UFOs. In the first case, his co-founder was John Alexander. In the second case, it was none other than Kit Green, who never told me about this. Right. John Alexander, mind control, mm. very low frequency waves, PhD in death studies, non uh, expert in non-lethal weaponry. Oh. He's working at Kirtland Air Force Base on mind control guns and shit. Okay. Yeah. So John Alexander's uh, interesting character. We'll get back to him. And so this whole passage, I was going to pull passages, but there's just like a lot here. Basically, Kit, for the first, like for a couple of years, Kit is basically playing it like he thinks it's all natural causes or hoaxes. Mm -hmm. And then slowly Jacques Vallée starts finding holes in the stories of like, in the stories Kate Green is telling him and like weird shit about like an investigation down in Brazil, which was definitely not anything, just some crazy, you know, some uh, primitive Indians, primitive Brazilians or something, you know, is kind of the vibe. Yeah. But Jacques's like, what he's saying doesn't make sense. Like, so does Kit actually not believe or don't he he eventually says that his thinking has come around but he starts referring to it as a mind virus in some way the ufo phenomenon yeah but it's weird it becomes very clear that the whole time kate green's been talking about this like he uses the term secret cabal and shit um about a group he's like you know there was this group of people some of whom i'd worked with for years I didn't even know they were part of this group. Wink, wink, Jacques, wink, wink. Like, I'm not telling you everything, you know? And it seems like Jacques Vallée finally, like, gets it and, like, gets brought in. Um, Okay. September 11th, 1990. Hal put off, Kit Green and I, I being Jacques Vallée, spent last evening together in this great hotel near the Pacific. My excuse to convene our meeting was a review of high-tech projects at IRT, a company in which my fund has invested. We compared notes about MJ-12 rumors, Majestic 12. Kit assured us that there once was a real Majestic, but it was only concerned with surviving a nuclear strike. Ralph Bloom's book, Out There, claims that the CIA's Domestic Collection Division investigates U.S. UFO cases. That's all true, said Kit, except that since 1977, that group has been called National Collection Division. The agency isn't supposed to have any domestic operations. In your letter, you said there th- you thought there was a black program, Jacques says to Kit. That's right. I'm sure it's handled appropriately. In my days, there wasn't more than one case a month in the classified reports. Now there are several per week. Sometimes they go up to the president. He used to have a drawer full of intriguing stuff at the agency in the form of photographs, films, reports, tapes. He threw it all away when he left. So the fact that this information is collected doesn't mean that it's being studied. Okay. 
After a full day of technology review, our private discussion came back to Bloom's book. The leak may point to Pandolfi at CIA, who is another bird boy. Uh, they asked him to investigate the Augsburg business, the six soldiers. I don't know what that refers to. Kit said, it's getting more and more weird. The messages on classified terminals came out of a secure network. Then it can only be one thing. The agency counterintelligence guys messing with their brains, said Hal. Hal put off. The conversation returned to the topic of secrecy. As an exercise, Kit asked us on a scale of zero to ten, what was the probability of existence of a hidden government project? He reiterated, I am sure there is active collection, handled appropriately. I'm not interested in inf infiltrating my own government. And then there's some other... Okay, uh, uh, so yeah. kindly summarize that. Sure. So Kid Green is basically saying like, yeah, there used to be a program. We collected this stuff. The cases have increased enough. I'm sure there's some black program where they're looking at this, but I'm also sure it's handled being handled appropriately. Mm -hmm. Then they talk about some case, and I don't know what they're talking about, the Augsburg case with the six soldiers. But the important point there was... You know, Hal put off saying this is agency counterintelligence guys messing with their brains. Yeah. I just messing think it's with whose brain? Some soldiers, some some case. Okay. Like I don't know anything about that. Yeah. Yeah. And then all right. So, you know, Kit says, I'm I'm not interested in infiltrating my own government. And that's also an important thing to realize about these guys. Mm -hmm. They are like government people. They believe in the government. Like, right. They they're believe standing in for that. the government. Right. Like they're, they believe they're agents that shit. of the government. Nice. They're not like infiltrators that are, you know, right. trying to get into the inside to find out the inside information. They're firmly right standing on the side of the government. And I think that that you know, among people don't trust the fucking government, you know, that makes you seem shady as shit. But it's important to realize it's a very human allegiance. They have yeah, loyalty there. That's who uh, they work for. And also their livelihood, you know. So in a, another entry, January 30th, 1991. All right. Starts the cold open in the middle of a conversation. Uh. Most of the researchers we know are zealots at heart and religious nuts, Kit says. There are other things going on. Ever heard of Eric Walker, president emeritus of Penn State University? He claims that aliens have indeed been recovered and taken to Wright-Patterson. You'd be in awe of the man, dean of engineering at Harvard, co-founder of the Academy of Engineering and Sciences, chairman of the Defense Science Board, former head of the Jasons, science advisor to the president, former chairman of CRW, goes on and on. He stated that four live aliens were retrieved. We studied them. They learned our language. We allowed them to blend into the population. <laughs> What's Walker's field of research? I asked, stunned. Sound waves, applications of acoustics. Ooh. He founded the Navy's underwater sound laboratory. He was also a co-founder of the Institute for Defense Analysis and a member of the H-bomb team. In one of his books, he writes that citizens don't necessarily have the right to know what government scientists are working on. Kit goes on to talk about how he tried to meet him and the dude just fucking stonewalled him. Yeah. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> they come from underwater. And also the sound wave acoustic shit, which we... In the remote viewing series, we saw the applications that has on consciousness changes. Yeah. Right? Okay. And that's also what John Alexander, the other bird boy, was working on, like very low frequency rate waves, microwaves in, in, in crowd control and in mind control. Right. So four alien entities recovered. Who are they? Well, like... Huh. Tom yeah. Hanks. Tom Hanks, <laughs> one of them. <laughs> Uh, who's another weird fucker? <laughs> Steve <laughs> Buscemi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was around. Was he around before the nineties? Though I don't remember any Buscemi before I don't the nineties. <laughs> Holy shit! I don't know. Okay. Okay. The specials. John yeah. Travolta. <laughs> <laughs> he was definitely around before the nineties. I think. Yeah. Uh, that's funny. Yeah. So I wanted to talk about John Alexander. Okay. I think, like, I, you know, this is just kind of to. I just want to use the Jacques Vallée journals to like illustrate that, like, okay, these guys talk about this shit. They talk about they some weird stuff. Publish this stuff. Maybe they never did. Maybe it's all a psyop. Yeah, right. Legitimately, you know, maybe. In this, Kit Green could be getting psyoped, psyopted, right? Mm -hmm. He could be getting got. He could be disinfoing how put off in Jacques Vallée. Right. Like, all this shit could, is possible. Honestly, like, uh, question, just question everything, mm -hmm. you know? Someone's. Someone lied. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know. Yeah. This, this it's not complete honesty here. Any any step of the way. Yeah. So, but I thought that the you know the reference to acoustics again, uh -huh. especially with who we're dealing with and shit. Yeah. So John fucking Alexander. This guy's weird. He he his face looks like an alien. Yeah. He looks like an alien with like a he's got a, a pompadour. Some sometimes a big head. He's got a big head, small face. No, it's not not coming up. John Alexander, actor in Men in Black 2, oddly enough. Son of a bitch. Can, can you believe that? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Can you believe that? If you uh, write like UFO or something, it'll show up. Some unknown actor is more famous than. Oh, yes. You showed me a picture of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 (laughs) Weird dude, dude. So is as a lot of the non-lethal weaponry that the Air Force was developing. Like that's like ray guns, shit like that was Mm -hmm. stuff that they were thinking of. Um, VLF, very low frequency sound waves. Uh, All the stuff that they like to use on protesters. Right. That they actually do use now. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you know, you can buy stock in Kratos, uh, Kratos defense. They make the microwave cannons. Right. Yeah. Damage you for life. Probably buy some stock in Kratos. Uh, I'm not a financial advisor. It's not financial advice, but that's going to get way more important. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. You're probably right. I don't want you to be right. No, I didn't. (laughs) Uh, yeah. So (sighs) John Alexander was a former, uh, commander of green berets. In Vietnam, who led Cambodian mercenaries behind enemy lines, allegedly took part in a number of clandestine programs. And he was uh, director of non-lethal programs at Los Alamos uh, National Laboratory, which invented the nuclear bomb. Mm -hmm. Um, He, not anymore, because old as fuck, maybe dead, maybe retired, definitely retired. Him and Albert Newton Stubblebean, who I kept referring to as... Stubble Dean. Stubble Bean. Because my... No, we were in a different universe. I think so. And we hopped over to this one. I don't know when it happened. Because I swear to God. Had, it was... I looked it up. Right. I, either we're both dyslexic or we're both in a different universe. His name was Stubble Dean. Yeah. But now it's Stubble Bean. Or Bine. But Bine. Stubble Bean is funny. Stubble Bean. Albert Newton Stubble Bean the third. Yeah. Fucking love this guy. Yeah. <laughs> I fucking love him so much. So... Bert and uh, John Alexander were also on the board of a re- remote viewing company called SciTech, founded by Major Ed Dames. No shit. Yeah. Also a very fitting name. Ed Dames. SciTech. Yeah, 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 yeah. And Major David Morehouse, who we never really talked about, but he was a guy. He's a guy. Yeah. Weird. Because Ed Dames is crazy as a goddamn loon. Mm-hmm. I mean, we know Bert is too. John, But John Alexander is crazy as a loon, but also held some important fucking post but man what is it with all these guys going fucking crazy because it seems to keep happening yeah like it kind of seems to keep happening that all these dudes just lose their fucking minds a bit or it's all a psyop right Mm -hmm. you can literally say that at the end of every sentence yeah i you could you don't even have to at this point i think that they do just go a little crazy yeah it's the nature of the game but so like we keep using the term mind control right yeah. We should talk about what that means. Okay. Right? Because it's that's one of those terms that's easy for people to write off because they think it's like remote control of someone's brain. Right. Or like you say a a, a code word and then all of a sudden the- Right. The, the now- Under your control, I'm your zombie. Anchors are a real thing. Yes, it, that's true. You know, you can learn how to implant an anchor in someone else in like NLP courses and shit. Totally. It doesn't work like the Manchurian candidate. Mm-hmm. They were trying to figure out if it did, right? Like they, yeah, they tried a lot of weird, shit. but mind control is also creating stage situations, right? Controlling flows of information, mm-hmm. creating reality for someone, yeah, somehow, right? Yeah, that's mind control. The other part of it is, you know, if the like if the Monroe Institute shit is for real, and having done some of the Gateway Tape shit, I think it is that you can induce altered states of consciousness with. Through an waves. audio track. Yeah. yeah. Through acoustic waves, through electromagnetic waves. And I think you can. You can simulate yep. different parts of the brain. It's a thing, right? And what that would mean in application is like, you know, using tones or, or waves to make people say more aggressive or more docile, shit like that. Mm-hmm. Much more blunt than like carefully uh, a boutique reality created for someone like Paul yeah. Benowitz, you know? Paul Benowitz was subjected to mind control, right? Yeah, you could definitely reality say that control. 100%. Yeah. And I want to talk about, I wanted to talk about that and bring up John Alexander and the waves and stuff, because we're going to take a little trip back through time now. Okay. To the kind of the start of all of this, which starts earlier than you think. Okay. Starts in the 1950s. Oh, that is earlier. With a dude named Andrea Puhark. Oh, yes. Yes. Now, Andrea Puhark was the dude who, end quote, discovered Yuri Geller. Mm-hmm. The Israeli psychic spook. Definitely both those things. <laughs> Who Have you seen his Twitter? Yes. Yes, he, I have. This dude loves spoons. Yeah. He fucking loves spoons so yeah. much. Honestly, <laughs> pretty good poster. I love him. 
Got to hand it to him. <laughs> Dude loves spoons. <laughs> there's a big, there's like the world's biggest spoon a video of the world's biggest spoon some bronze statue it was all about yeah. it yeah oh it's so good well of course he does this is like his <laughs> it's, whole thing. It's his thing he invented that yeah yeah that's his thing it's great but before yuri geller and tria puhark who was born henry puhark in chicago i kept expecting him to have like a romanian accent or something he didn't he's yeah, just no. an american guy he was a parapsychologist Doctor or something, and was employed at Fort Detrick, uh, the Edgewood, Edgewood Laboratories or no Edgewood shit. Labs. Yeah, working on mind control for the CIA. Yeah, alleged probably. And we know right. that there are some really brutal experiments that happened at Edgewood. Yes, there are some really fucking brutal experiments that happened at Edgewood. After that, which is it's hard to find, it's hard to find corroborating evidence for that. Mm-hmm. I think it comes from the book, the Star, uh, the Stargate Conspiracy, which I have not read, but I've seen it referred to in multiple other places. So we're going to say that that's part of the lore. Okay. Right. Hark also was part of this thing afterwards called the Roundtable Foundation, which was a group of wealthy donors and a, a board of wealthy ass people centered around this barn in Maine that Andrea Puharic turned into a parapsychology lab. Oh, Cool. Yeah, by himself over the course of a winter. The cold fucking a 1950s. Maine winter. Yeah. He built a fucking parapsychology lab in this barn. And <sighs> he looked very like a normal researcher when he, in like the 1950s. And then he started looking yeah. crazy. He used to look like a normal guy. He really he did. And then he fucking and went nuts. Crazier and crazier. Oh, yeah. No. Yeah, okay. Yeah. He. No. That Okay. I'm going to cut all that shit. So why don't I just pull up the Wikipedia page? It's right there. Yeah. Um, yeah. He had a degree in philosophy and pre-medicine has an MD. And then he worked at Edgewood Arsenal Research Laboratories in Fort Detrick, meeting with various high ranking officers and officials, primarily from the Pentagon, CIA and Naval Intelligence. Uh, yeah. So in like early in like 1960, uh, Fuhark was looking at seances and uh, how, how people were faking like ectoplasm and stuff. Yeah. And right, he uh, did an episode on he played himself on Perry Mason. Excellent. Nineteen sixty one. Oh wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bit uh, of an actor, huh? Yeah. Good for him. Yeah, and this might have been before he was at Edgewood. Honestly, yeah, I think I think this was before he was at Edgewood. December nineteen fifty two. He's at the Roundtable Foundation, and he invites this Indian mystic D. G. Vinod to a seance. Right. During the seance experiment, Vinod goes into a trance and channels a group of entities calling themselves the Nine. Right. Mm. And the Nine are, they're speaking as if they're a collect, like they're one thing with nine, right. you know, sections like essentially. We... Yeah. Like... I'm the voice of the Nine and they imply that they're the old Egyptian gods. Uh huh. The ascended had masters. Many, many names throughout time. Right. They imply they're, in the, they're the ascended masters, the secret chiefs. Mm -hmm. It's, we're still here. Yeah. We, we're still we left. We're still fucking here. No, you don't leave. Right. Yeah, no, I know. But the nine tells the people, the nine people sitting there, that they're the new class of Brahmins, the top of the yeah. caste structure. Students. Yes. Yeah. And these nine people would go on to do some very fucking interesting things. No shit. Like Arthur Young inventing the helicopter, uh -huh. right? And also being a weird mystic and shit. Uh, a woman named Ruth Payne, who testified in the assassination of uh, John F. Kennedy, mm -hmm. and who was who had uh, Marina Oswald, Lee Harvey Oswald's wife, staying at her house around the time of the Payne. Also, his name that comes from Thomas Payne, the famous American uh, writer and statesman, uh -huh. pamphleteer. This is an old money yeah. family. These are rich fucking people, connected fucking people, and. As this is an informal episode, I don't have all the fucking crazy connections. We'll get right. to that later, you know, on another episode. I'm not going to spoil it. Yeah. Right? Um, but really strange connections to the Oswalds. Got uh, Lee Harvey Oswald the job at the book depository, in fact. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> another person who's there was uh, one of Canada's richest people, the Bromfmans. A, la Bromf a lady named Bromfman. Bromfman. And some of you may recognize that name if you know anything about the Nexium cult. Uh, yeah. Yep. The two Bronfman sisters, probably the granddaughters or great great or great granddaughters of this person, were the people keeping the Nexium cult afloat with money. No shit. Yes. Wow. Okay. 
from there, it's this kind of flash in the pan thing, right? He deeply affects him and stuff. Puhark, when he was uh, working with Yuri Geller, uh, he actually, when Yuri Geller started channeling Spectra, that UFO thing that he channeled, Puhark told Yuri Geller that he was channeling the Nine, mm-hmm. that he was in contact with the Nine, which is interesting. Apparently, Yuri Geller did not like Andrea Puhark. Yeah, he's like, no, I have my own thing. Thank you very much. Yeah. I know what it is. Yeah. Puhark did write a book about Yuri Geller called Yuri. <laughs> <laughs> Park's a weird dude. Yeah. We're going to talk. That might be the next episode. I'd... But then. Yuri the... Geller's like his little pet. He wants him to be his little pet. Yuri doesn't want to be. Yeah. Yuri's like, I'm literally a Mossad agent, dude. Like, fuck. <laughs> so later on, the nine show up again at this place called the Esalen Institute. Yeah. The Esalen Institute's this like new age, hippie, you know, place where they have thought leaders come and speak. Yeah, and you can also do resorts there. Yeah, a lot of it's a lot of smart fuck hippie shit. Yeah, it's the best way to describe. It. They they also were really in, influential in like the '60s, having like you know Alan Watts would go and speak, or Terrence McKenna, or you know all those guys, right? Right. Um, the the groovy philosophers, the LSD culture philo- uh, philosophers, and there's always been rumors of CIA involvement in Esalen, right? Mm-hmm. Like that it it is part of the psyop that was the '60s counterculture. Yeah, because. <laughs> Kind of was. I mean, like, literally, they were... Andy Warhol was a CIA asset. Mm-hmm. And the point of that is actually kind of cool, right? Uh, it's not... It's really not this sinister thing. They were funding um, modern art because they wanted... It was propaganda against Russian citizens to be like, look how cool shit is in America. Yeah. Like, you have freedom of expression. You paint all this weird shit. Like, yeah, all this weirdo art. We're going to fund it to make people see you can be a weirdo in America. Right? Like, not all their games are necessarily evil. Mm-hmm. A lot of them are. Right. Some of them are not. At some point at Esalen, uh, someone starts channeling the fucking nine again. Um, and this time they have a spokesperson named Tom. Yeah. Yeah. At least it's not St. Germain. We'll get to him. Oh, boy. <laughs> yeah, but it, it's it's weird. It's like very clearly the same shit. It's that yeah. same channel entity bullshit. And it, there's rumors of like Puhark, what Puhark was working on at Edgewood and stuff was hypnosis and implanting the experience of channeled entities into people good lord yeah oh which could it's ex- scary it's terrifying it's straight up terrifying like please don't put any entities inside my body yeah you. now again this is all like this all comes from conspiracy literature a lot of it you know it's usually less sensational than it reads yeah right? sometimes it's not but who knows who knows yeah so that's a whole fucking thing now I found out about the nine. Well, no, I didn't find out about it, but one of the few books about the nine and Andrew Puhark, it's not even about it, it just takes up a big section, is Peter Lavenda's Sinister Forces. Mm-hmm. Right? Which is this monstrous three volume, it's huge, paranoid nightmare of synchronicity in which Peter Lavenda beats you over the head with weird coincidences until you finally accept that something fucked up is happening here. Yeah. Right? Like that's the whole point. It's just. That, that is oh. an apt description of the series, yeah. It's fucking sick. Like, you know yeah. when you find a band that you're just like, this is, where where's this band been my whole uh, life? This is perfect for me, yeah. Peter Lavenda as an author is that fucking band. Like, I want to mm-hmm. I want to teach. I'm just like, And it's easy to, he's easy to read. Mark of a fucking intelligent dude. Yeah. Yeah. He is, and that dude is fascinating. Mm-hmm. Easy to listen to talk. Yeah. Well. Oh, yeah. Extremely charismatic. Extremely intelligent. Fucking all the, uh, wrote all these books about like the connection between Lovecraft and what might have been going on in Lovecraft's head and how Lovecraft might have been tapping into the spooky, too. But because he was, you know, an incredible racist, even for his time, he was very scared of the other. Yeah. And that's why a lot of this shit came through the way it did. Yeah. For Lovecraft. But I, w- I was reading this. And I'm like, this is fucking, this is all fucking nuts. This is that good, good paranoia. Right. Uh-huh. I was like, where have I fucking seen this name before? Where have I seen this name, Peter Lavenda? And- oh, right. He wrote the nonfiction Secret Machines trilogy with Tom DeLong, mm-hmm. published by To the Stars. And we're back at To the Stars. And we're back at To the Stars. And it's like, wait a second. What, what the fuck is happening here? Yeah. Right. Because so- I've totally discounted To the Stars up to this point. And now I'm like, maybe I should, maybe that was hasty of me. There's something to be aware of. Yeah, for sure. And like, there's there's all sorts of different games going on with UFOs right now. 
and all this shit, UFOs, mind control, the spooky, the paranormal. Uh-huh. One of the weirdest fucking things is uh, how, because I started reading that Secret Machines book too, or listened, I'm listening to that one on audiobook. It's not reading. It's a lot weirder of a narrative than I thought mm-hmm. to the stars was presenting. It's weird. Oh, it's good. like, it's ancient aliens y. Yeah. But in a cargo cult. Okay. Cargo cult perspective. Interesting. And one of the, and it's basically like, they kind of just got Peter Levend and they were like, do your thing. Yeah. Right. And it, Tom DeLonge kind of said, oh, you should write about this. You should write about that. And Levenda does have connections. Like he's wrote a lot of books over, over the course of his very interesting life. He's met a lot of weird dudes, mm-hmm. you know, um, he has connections and he has people's trust. He doesn't fuck him over. And that's kind of why people suspect him of being a spook. Yeah. Because he as a journalist and doesn't fuck over his sources. Maybe some other reasons too. <laughs> no, I can't do, I can't literally say anything about because he will come into my house and beat me up. Uh-huh. That's what he does. He just shows up and browbeat you. Mm-hmm. One of the interesting thought experiments that was in Secret Machines, I thought was like, what the fuck? was like, imagine a magic ritual, which all of a sudden, like already you're like, wait a minute, this is Tom DeLonge shit and you got Peter Levenda talking about magic rituals? I mean, okay. I get it. I, well, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, because that's the thing. But for it to be like the thing trying to be sold to the mainstream. Right. What the fuck? But he writes that like, you know, you you draw, you make a circle, you put candles, you know, the cardinal points and shit, and you try to get, push yourself through to another dimension to try and catch something and talk to it. Think of what, what if the UFO with its circular shape lights piloted by an entity yeah. was a magician in a different universe doing a ritual to summon, totally. to summon you. I and that's an yeah. abduction scenario. And For he sure. went like, that, okay, that's not what it is, but just, that's just a fun thought experiment. It is. And it's like, oh very shit, that's thought. a very fun thought experiment. Yeah. So that's weird too. The fact that the book's kind of good. Yeah. You know, from the perspective like, of. Oh, okay, Tom DeLong. Yeah. From the perspective of, oh, this is weird shit. Like, I don't know if it's true. Like, it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't matter, matter to me. It doesn't matter to me. But what is interesting is that like, you know, you know how like Lou Elizondo used to be part of To The Stars when uh-huh. it was To The Stars Academy? He's not there anymore. A lot of those dudes who were there at the start aren't there anymore. So it used to be uh, Lou Elizondo and then a dude named Steve Justice. Great name. Yeah. Who was uh, from Lockheed Martin Skunk Works. Uh, Steve Justice. Steve Justice from Skunk Works. Jesus Christ. All American man right there. He left around the same time as Lou Elizondo, which was right after Joe Biden won the presidential election. Uh Uh-huh. Which is interesting because... Of how the modern Democrats have been the ones talking about UFOs, specifically like Hillary Clinton had mentioned them, Barack Obama mentioned UFOs, and John Podesta, Hillary Clinton's campaign advisor, and that's all we're going to say about him, even though we do cover conspiracy theories, we're not covering the rest of them. That's yeah, that. um, that, that's enough of that for now. Uh, he was super, he is super into UFOs, John uh-huh. Podesta. I have to imagine. He would be. He would be. Yeah, I have to imagine that the Biden administration has a lot of the same people who would have been in the Clinton administration. I feel like the dudes who left to the stars Academy are working for the government again. Uh huh. Yeah. That's kind of how I feel left it to the stars is Tom DeLong, two businessmen and this dude named Jim Semivan on the, the we'll get back to Jim in a second on the advisory board is help put off Eric Davis, Christopher Mellon of the Carnegie Mellon family, okay. who is a former assistant uh, secretary of defense. Yeah. He's, 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 he's all there. there wow. Yeah. Jim Semivan is the listed as the co-founder of to the stars Academy alongside Tom DeLong. He's a 25-year CIA op- operative, mm-hmm. right? Admitted on the fucking page. He it was a spook. 25-year right. CIA operative. And let's see if I can find this clip of, because they release a podcast. Now they're, they kind of fell from the mission they initially had. Now they're kind of just producing media. That, I thought that that was their original mission. It was. was like soft disclosure through media. Yes, but they had at that time, they had other people. With, yeah, uh, we're more credible than just Tom DeLong, uh-huh. right? Tom DeLong and his CIA handler, right? The guy who's there to make sure Tom doesn't fuck up. Yeah, that's what Jim Sam Event's purpose is, right? That's why he's there. Mm-hmm. You know. All right, so I, I have a I have a clip here from the to the stars to the stars talks number ten. Oh boy! Uh, okay. Secret machines, gods, man, and war discussion, part two with Jim Semivan and Peter Lavenda. Alrighty. So Jim Semivan, the twenty-five year CIA operative, is going to be uh, the dude with the bad accent asking the question. Peter Lavenda is the dude with the super smooth voice who answers. Okay. You're gonna like this question. Yeah. 
Can you talk about the alien abduction ritual uh, uh, in his in historical sense? Because you you did uh, delve into that uh, a lot in the book. And have we seen, excuse me, evidence of the same scenario in historical records? And how far does this go back? I'm thinking uh, about the mind control experiments we have all heard about, say, in MK Ultra, these other other things. Well, Jim, uh, why don't we have that discussion? Uh, no, no, no. I, that was way before my time. I know, I know. Uh, yes, yes. Shame on them for doing that, I might add. I'm not a big fan of that. But. It was inevitable. It would come up, Jim. Yeah. Um, well, it's like this. Um, I just wanted to play that clip a little uh, bit. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wait, wait, I don't get any more. That's it. We can go. We can go further. Yeah. But like just him going, we can have the MK Ultra conversation if you want, Jim. Yeah. Like that was, it felt, that felt very pointed to me. Like he was like, you're CIA. You're really going to bring that up? Like, you know. You, th- you think so? I don't know. It felt that way. Okay. We can well, well, Jim. We can have that conversation if you want. Um, you know, yeah, yeah. Well, there's two big, heavy questions you have out there: the historical, the ancient historical uh, precedents for it, and then the more, the more recent ones. Yeah, Jock Jock talks a lot about this, right? And past work to Magonia, and then you get, sure. uh, you know, even uh, uh, I think Tom Bullard in his book, uh, the UFOs and Modern UFOs uh, and the Myth and Mystery of UFOs. Yes, I mean the 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 idea that humans are abducted or taken to someplace else by mysterious creatures is, is very ancient. It's all over the world. And every culture has its word for that particular yeah, creature. Fairy that land. That. In yeah. some cases, uh, in ancient, in the ancient Middle East, there was uh, the Lilithu, you know, from which we get the term, the word Lilith, uh, supposedly Adam's first wife, by the way, according to some uh, Jewish traditions. And this Lilith steals babies. Right, we'll steal an infant. We'll steal a child. Um, the idea of a child stealing spirit is is common throughout the world. It may have to do with anxiety about childbirth and and uh, child fatality, for instance, things like that. But then there's also the things that I grew up with uh, when I was a kid, talking about you know there are people out there who will steal children, who will steal you if you're not careful. Um, in those days, where I was living, and the kind of things that I heard from my parents, we had to be aware of gypsies, right? The yeah, gypsies right. would come and steal the children. Right? <laughs> of course, it was nonsense, but this is something that was that was around. Um, other kinds of motifs like that. There's this idea that there are beings that do this. More um, complicated issues then come to the incubi, succubi, these beings that come in the middle of the night. Uh, they steal semen from the male and they impregnate women um, to give birth to horrible creatures or, or something. There's the witch's Sabbath where witches basically will steal people and take them to a Sabbath on top of a mountain somewhere and perform hideous sacrifices. The whole, the whole, uh, satanic mm-hmm. panic of the eighties was based on this very old medieval concept that uh, witches are being stolen. There you um, go. Another thing that's really interesting about Lavenda's work and especially his work here is he is, and I didn't expect this to be tied in as well. Remember, like we we started talking about the whole like Kenneth Grant Lovecraft mm-hmm. connection a long time ago, right? In some series, like that just kept coming coming up, right? Yeah, the idea of fiction that reaches out and shit. And Lavenda like wrote the book on Kenneth Grant and Lovecraft and shit. And like, it's weird how well it you know that stuff starts relating back to fucking Hellier and yeah, well, uh, other you know paranormal investigations that are going on right now has that same flavor and the fact that like a lot of the to the stars shit has the same cosmic horror weird flavor as the rest of it i don't know it's part of it yeah like, this is all part of it right and i, I guess that's my my point with this uh-huh. is that it's it's just a, it's, it's another weird part of it and it's the thing that lavenda seems to be driving at is that like neither science nor religion on their own are enough to make sense of what's going on you need no. some combination plus more of science and religion. Yeah, some combination, but also like the complete rejection of both mm. and just the opening yourself up to like something entirely new. Right, exactly. And just like delving into yourself. Yeah, something that's really hard to do a soft disclosure with, like sell to people. Right? Yeah. Which it could be an, a psyop that they're just like letting this crackpot fucking run wild. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? But another dude who used to be at To the Stars, Lou Elizondo. Mm-hmm. A lot of people got strong opinions on Lou Elizondo. Yeah. I kind of think it's, again, 
he doesn't seem trustworthy because he's a military guy and he's loyal to the government. Like he, he loves America. That dude loves America so much. Yeah. And he's going to lie to you to protect the secrets of the government. Mm -hmm. He's just that guy or he'll like, he, he does. He's a patriot. I bet he voted for Mitt Romney. Yeah. You know, like that. So, okay. I was listening to this podcast. Strange podcast that just started existing called Theories of Everything with this dude, Kurt Jimungle, who that's how he pronounces his name. Jimungle. He introduces himself as a filmmaker with a background in theoretical physics and mathematics. Yeah. His big toe. Yeah. He's got a bachelor's in both of those. I wouldn't. He. I'd be careful bandying that about there, but mm -hmm. and as a filmmaker, he made this documentary about how uh, woke culture was the most dangerous thing in the world. OK. Yeah. And how that's like way more of a problem than anything else. Anything else. I guess if you pay attention to it, it is. Yeah. Or like if you don't pay attention to other things. Yeah. Yeah. But it was very it had a very specific flavor to it, mm -hmm. you know, and to flavor i had kind of to flavor i'd kind of seen before it reminds me of a peter teal flavor a jordan peterson flavor a yeah. different kind of psyop if you will mm -hmm. maybe a psyop that a person doesn't even know that they're perpetrating yes yeah yeah, yeah. just like a, just born and bred from their own sense of like false superiority maybe and i'm not saying that about mr Jim jimungo <laughs> It's, it's just, it's confusing how this dude comes out of nowhere with like, I expect him to have made like well-known films or like have mm -hmm. degrees at well-known places, I like high like degrees, because for, he's interviewing like tons of very mm -hmm. impressive people. Me, myself, um, like, I don't speak from a position of authority ever. No, me neither. I, there's, there's no, no leaders. I'm trying to figure shit out. I don't know anything. Yeah. Like, this no is, gods, no masters. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know a goddamn thing. Right. You know? But just curious how like this dude kind of came out of nowhere and like interviewing all these very smart people about these subjects and stuff. And that's the, one way to to form a theory of everything. It is. And like he could be totally legit. And if he is cool. Yeah. You know? But it's sense, like his style and she reminded me of this other young dude who I don't know the name of who like was interviewing this other guy, Gary Nolan, this biologist who was talking about UFOs recently. And like mm -hmm. Eric Weinstein, who is the, you know, is a Peter Thiel ally. Um uh -huh. He was also the same type of style, same age, same flavor. You know, I'm like, there's another hand in this. There's a, there's another tentacle of money in here poking around is what it felt like. Okay. Yeah. 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 Which if I was Peter Thiel, I'd be trying to figure out UFOs too. I mean, a dude's a villain, a compelling villain. Uh, he's also very interested in psychedelics and shit. Uh -huh. um, I absolutely believe he'd be interested in UFOs. But there was another interesting thing. That Lou Elizondo said on this like two and a half hour interview, which is actually pretty, it's interesting. Like, I don't think that Lou Elizondo really knows anything. I think he knows as much as we do. Yeah. Basically, there might be some specifics, um, but there, there's no disclosure coming any more than uh -huh. has already happened. Because it, it turns out Lou Elizondo is literally just another one of these guys who's been part of this thing for a long time. Mm. Check this clip out. Okay. Oh, I should say, like, if if you don't know, um, Lou Elizondo uh, was probably the head of one of the programs at the at the Pentagon, ATIP or OSAP, one of those yeah. that the New York Times wrote about in 2017 that started the whole modern thing, just in case you don't know what the fuck we're talking about. Okay. Okay, now, you mentioned the word woo quite a while ago, and just so you know, I don't... Firstly, I don't use that word because that word is used disparagingly. <laughs> and also because much of what's considered slur. pseudoscience becomes science. And also what you <laughs> categorize as being paranormal depends on the assumptions of what normal is. And we don't have a theory of everything, so it's difficult to say. Given that, what's your opinion on remote viewing? And I believe you dabbled in that, so I would like to know... Well, i just like to know more about that. Okay, so remote viewing is a... Um is defined as a human cognitive capability to uh, observe things separated by space and time, in essence. Um, uh, I'm not going to discuss what um, I've done in my, my career. I've done a lot of things in my career for my country. Um, <laughs> Whoa. Most of it, as you probably agree, uh, has never seen the light of day. 
and it's not really germane or relevant to to this discussion of UAP. The UAP topic is only one aspect of my career and my service to my country, um, but the rest is private, unless you know doesn't need to be. Um, I don't think uh, a discussion on on remote viewing has anything to do with with UAPs uh, or my time in the ATA program, and I think it's just a distraction. Um, and uh, I'll I'll leave it at that. Okay. That's... What a weird answer. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Uh, he does not want to talk about remote viewing. I think it. I think it might have something to do with the UAP. I think it might. I, I think, think it really might actually. I so. think it might have something to do with Lou Elizondo. Yeah. And I I did some search and I I saw that on on Reddit someone was saying that they in another podcast or interview they sent him a super chat and asked about his remote viewing career and he answered and he said that he was trained in remote viewing at the Monroe Institute mm-hmm. and was when he was deployed in Afghanistan, he was using remote viewing. Yeah. 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 Which the reason he can't talk about that is because that is long after it officially ended. Right. Yeah. Yeah. They're still doing it. They're still fucking doing it. Um, And that's again, of course, Lou Elizondo was a remote viewer because yeah. He's in this thing. It's the same people. Right. That's why how put that it's it's the same guys. That doesn't mean they're a secret club of Illuminati or whatever. No, I'm not secret. We're talking about. It. Right. We're talking about. Them. And they're dudes who are in this weird program who all, all tend to go crazy. Yeah. Uh, who have been exploring consciousness and the mind and magic, essentially. Mm-hmm. And that's what to the stars is. That's yeah. what all this shit is, is an outgrowth of this magic nonsense that these guys have been up to. Right. It's crazy. We want answers. But we're not going to get it. We're not going to get it. Yeah, exactly. Because we don't, exactly. they don't know any answers. It's inconceivable. And if you take these dudes at their word, what they're saying is like, we're, we're just trying to get people talking about it and demanding answers. Right. We don't know answers either. Yeah. It's weird, man. Totally. I don't even know. Yeah. Like, I honestly like. You know, it's a good like jumping off point, though, for yes, for some interesting thoughts. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Um, fucking a. Yeah. Like I said, there's going to be no conclusions in this episode. Yeah. Oh, how about the five of cups? Disappointment. Disappointment. Exactly. Yeah. Literally. And like, it's just so well, there you go. We don't have any answers. It's like, yeah. <laughs> Weird we shit's happening. We've been looking at it for a few decades, but human lives are short. Oh, longer than a few decades. Well, yeah. Like, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. as long as we've been conscious, we've been like, what is this? Right. Exactly. What is, what is, what is all of this? Yes. These what are is, literally is just this invisible world that's overlapped over ours. That yeah. We can't conceive of, but is this affecting us? These fucking guys are just like us. Yeah. Except they happen to work for the government. And they think about things differently weird. and have a different background than us. Yes. So they just have a different viewpoint of it. And also another thing I've been thinking about is the fact that like if things are being covered up by these types of people, uh huh, it's not us they're worried about. Uh oh. Right. Oh. No. It's religious zealots. It's simpletons for lack of a better word people that like can't have that don't understand nuance Maybe. that it would be a, th- a threat to their way of life and there's also big business interests and shit I like no i feel like i just the I w- i'd want to talk to the simpletons i'd be like what do you know what have you seen well i mean the it's ones who have seen the, weird shit yeah, yeah it's gonna be the the best source of information but i mean like there's a lot of churches in this country man we don't see it because where we yeah. live well it's a just dis- there's so many different lenses through which to view what's basically the same phenomena. Yes. But depending on like what skin you're in, right. Whose shoes you're walking in, you're going to have a completely different experience of the same thing. Yeah. And a lot of worldviews will be challenged. Some are pretty well prepared. Yeah. Now there's another possibility here. Okay. I don't like that. I have to bring this up. Uh Uh-huh. But we do. Okay. I'm going to ask you to look up a couple pictures. Okay. First, look up a picture of Peter Lavenda. Next, look up a picture of the Count of St. Germain. Oh, God. The Blavatsky version. You tell me. That's not Pete without a beard. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> I mean. No, 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 no. I just thought it was funny. Yeah. There's just one guy. Just it, God, right. it's literally him. And he's just fucking 
It's literally Saint Germain. He's just pulling the damn strings. I would, I would love it. I would you love know? it. Too. I think that Saint Germain, his spirit can can enter and influence all of us at any point in time. We're st- like I said, we're still here. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> so, yep, that's us not coming to any conclusions about UFOs. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, we got nothing. We got, we got no, we got no answers. But weird shit's definitely weird. Yep. Oh. Can't deny that. Shit. Here's another thing that I forgot. Okay. Andrea Puharik was the dude who brought magic mushrooms to the attention of the U.S. government. Yeah. Yeah. He was did. one of the dudes. I was going to yeah. say something about that, but I didn't. No, and that, that's super important. If, but his ass, if you've ever eaten magic mushrooms, they're the spook. It's the spookiest of all psychedelics. Uh huh. You know, more than any of the other, like mushrooms get spooky. It's there's a reason Bill Hicks talks about eating mushrooms and talking to aliens. Mm-hmm. There's a reason that's a meme, right? It feels like you can go to fairy world. And Drew Puhark was using magic mushrooms to go to fairy world and study ESP and shit. Yeah. And a lot of times the psychedelics are a brute force way to get in touch with the spooky. Yep. Right. You don't need them to do it, but they'll get you there. It's, it's brute force. Yeah. Right? For better or for worse. And if this all, if, you know, if this whole story, this part of the overall legend, you know, starts with a crazy man eating mushrooms, well, that makes perfect sense. Mm-hmm. And that's, that does mean that there is, there is some outside force yeah. impacting this that is unknowable. Right. And so any psyops or mind control shit is happening under the level of they don't know what the fuck is going on. Yeah. Right. I think it kind of necessarily is. I'd be, or at least I'd be very surprised if anyone, if there was anyone alive who could make sense of any of it. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. Well, then. Yeah. Well, well, there you have it. There you have something. We don't know anything. We don't know shit. There you go. But we're going to keep looking. I think my next story, I'm going to cover uh, Puharik and the Nine in, in more detail. Sweet. And um, look forward to it. Yeah. Talk more about ESP and like Faraday cages and shit. And, all right. All right. Uh, I'm into it. Perhaps a murderer pretending to be Andrea Puharik to fuck with some. Yeah, and his, girl psychic, and then all of his hoarding tendencies, yeah, and all that fun stuff. Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, all right. Okay. Yeah, well, thank you guys so much for listening. Yes, thank you from the bottom of my little heart. Yes, and from the bottom of mine as well. Tune in next week. I think next week is we're doing a cool thing. Yeah, doing a special thing next week. You're gonna hear some some AI channeling. Yeah, yeah. yeah we're gonna do something weird. Um, yep. I'm really excited. Okay. Yeah. All right. Take care, guys. Peace out. Peace.